Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's community discussion. We are so glad that you are with us. Um, we have a really exciting uh, panel tonight. I want to uh, get tonight's community discussion started with the, oh, there she is already, the fabulous Lee Garlington. Lee, thank you so much for coming uh, tonight and for putting together this extraordinary panel. Uh, just before we uh, started, I uh, asked everyone how many years they've been in the business, and we have over 190 years of, uh, of uh, work um, with everyone on the panel tonight. So uh, very excited to hear about their experiences, where they're at now, and uh, I turn it over to you, and I'll see you at the end when we close. All right. Thank I'd you, like Lee. to welcome my fabulous panel. We have here Elena Campbell-Martinez, Jack Merrill, Angela Gibbs and Ho Jun, and uh, I am thrilled to have everybody here. Um, I'm rather than me ask a bunch of questions saying, so when you did this and when you did that, I'm just gonna very briefly tell you my history and let everybody else do the same. Um, I began, uh, I, I started my career in Los Angeles in uh, 1982. I got cast into a play that ran for five months, went into another play by the same playwright that went for 17 months. So I was on stage for 22 months straight. And the second play happened to have a, a, an up and coming young actress in it named Jean Smart. And I think Jean did 19 different pilots while we were doing that. And every <laughs> Friday night, um, I, got, I went on three nights a week as my regular character. And then on Friday night, I got to go on as the lead. And because of that, and because they were trying to make a movie out of this particular play, uh, with eight women, we got seen by all the casting directors and agents and, you know, movers and shakers in Hollywood at that time. And that's really how my career began. I haven't had to say, would you like fries or Caesar salad with that since 1984? Um, most of my career has been in film and television. Um, I was very lucky because at that time, you, it was sort of like you either did film or you did TV. You either did comedy or you did drama. And so I kind of had that career of playing the comic relief in the hour show and the one who cried in the sitcom. And, um, and then recently in 2019, I just did three plays back to back at the Ruskin Theater. So I feel like I've come full circle. Take it away, Angela. Take it away, my so, dear. Uh, okay, I'll keep it brief. Brief. Um, started my career in 1968 when we moved out here from Detroit, Los Angeles. We moved out to Los Angeles and started in a theater called Pasla, and it was uh, in the community. And from the, I'm there, I met Roger Mosley, who was an up and coming actor. And we moved from there to another theater called Mufundi. And back then it was uh, as a result of the Watts riots, there was a lot of money being channeled into the community to, to create theater and other, other forms of expression. So my mother and I kind of moved into that area. And I had been studying a little bit in high school, but during that time I was in a play, Roger Mosley was directing it, a young man named Max Julian, was writing a, a movie, had written a movie called Cleopatra Jones. And he saw me on stage performing. I was 17 and I was offered the role. Now there would be many, many, many years uh, until I was offered anything again, but I, uh, but I got in the union, I got an agent, that was my first film. And then from there, I continued to do theater went on to school and, uh, at Howard University and studied theater there and then came back and decided I was going to quit because it was very difficult and there was a lot of black exploitation films at the time and I just didn't feel like, you know, I was just over it. I was over playing the prostitute, the prostitute <laughs> or the drug dealer's uh, girlfriend who was a prostitute, you, you know. I mean, <laughs> It was just so limited in terms of what was available. So I decided to start a theater and that's another story, but it would kind of went, in, went that direction. And out of that came 227, which was a series that I talked my mother into, or I talked her into being in the play and the play became a series. And I learned a lot behind the scenes. And then I kind of segued back into this business. 
And interesting enough, we're talking about aging. My career really started to take off the older I got. Um, so I've gotten a chance to do a lot of TV, a lot of film, but also being behind the scenes, being a theater producer, et cetera, gave me a real respect for this business. And, and I think a different view in terms of my role in this business, wanting to do things that matter and knowing that I, had, I could have an impact. So um, both as an actor, but also behind the camera. So that's, and we can get into credits and what have you, but speaking of Gene Smart, I must say, I have a recurring role on Hacks. And I absolutely love that show. I'm so <laughs> glad to be on it. Yeah. And you are wonderful on it. Thank you. And, and for those of you who don't know, Angela's mother is the exquisite Marla Gibbs. But I think yes. you have to figure that Who out. just got her star on the Walk of Fame. <laughs> oh, it happened already? Yay. It did. It oh, did. Um, Elena, tell us a little about you. Hi. Um, I started my acting career uh, in 1996 eight um, in Antigua, Guatemala, uh, because I was working down there. I was doing social work, volunteer social work, and I'd go to community theater and I just loved it. And I just thought it seemed so much fun, but so terrifying to get on a stage and have people look at you and listen to you. And so I just kept going to these plays and talking about how fabulous it looked. And somebody said, well, you can do it because it's community theater. It's for the community. You could just go and do it. So I did it. I just started doing it and I couldn't stop doing it. And I got addicted to it. I started taking classes down there. And uh, after three, the, the first three years, I had done 12 plays. And the, this was like a weekend, you know, because you would do it for a weekend and you and 300 people would come see you in a weekend. It was amazing. And all of our plays were in English and I was hooked. So when I moved back to the States, I came to LA and my, my sister was already here and she was an actress and she was doing commercials and stuff. And she said, with your theater resume, you could do a lot in LA. I'm like, I don't know if a theater resume of, from Antigua, Guatemala, but okay, I think it'll be fun. I want to keep acting. So I came here and I got an agent and uh, a commercial agent. I started doing commercials and I started doing soaps and started doing theater any chance I got. Um, so I did a lot of, uh, black box, non-union theater, but I, you know, I was addicted to all of it. Um, and so that, you know, I moved here in 2004, so I feel like a newbie. I still feel like a complete newbie here, but, um, I haven't stopped working and I haven't stopped loving it. And I haven't stopped loving mostly the, the people that I meet when I do, whether it's theater or a movie or a TV show, the people that I meet, the people, the friendships that I, that I have, I met Angela doing a play and we've right. been friends ever since. Um, <laughs> and so it's, that's for me, it's, it's all about the community of it. And, um, and so I'm, I'm here for life as long as they'll have me. <laughs> Excellent. Ho Jun. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so I wasn't really in, in the, uh, in the theater arts. Um, I'm ac actually from Hawaii. Well, I was born in South Korea and I, I moved to, our family moved to Hawaii or Hawaii, um, when I was young and, um, I was more in fashion and uh more like visual arts like in painting but i always loved um film you know a lot of foreign films and then we um i moved to from hawaii to uh, new york city and that's when i met gene frankel and he was just like gene frankel for some people who don't know who he is um he was um, from, I guess, like um, Lee Strasberg, that whole um, actor's act, um, studio. But he was from the uh, group theater. And when I met him, I just wanted to be in, uh, within his presence. And so uh, I just thought that, you know, acting was kind of, you know, just kind of part of life. And when I met him and I just, um, I just love what he had to say. And then I'd be sort of kind of, just kind of fell into it. And uh, so I became an actor and I thought it was something that was less uh, lonely because when you're 
a painter or draw uh, or drawing, you know, it's like you're doing solitary, right? You, you, you're by yourself. Whereas uh, performance arts, you're in front of an audience, but still you're still alone in some sense, right? So um, yeah, so I was in New York and then um, was there and studying with Jean and I was there for about eight years. And then I thought, oh, I wanna get paid. So I came to LA <laughs> and I've been here, I don't know, some, I can't remember when, but I've been here for uh, maybe about 20 years or something. And um, I think um, now I'm learning and I'm just learning more and more that, you know, any type of production, it, whether it's theater or it has to do with the filmmaking, it's like, a, it's a collaboration and it's fantastic. And I met Angela in that sense, you know, and here I am because of Angela and I, I get to meet V, I get to meet Elena, I get to meet Jack and I, I, meet, I get to meet Kim and here I am. And also just so you, you all know, Ho June is, I think you're the one who's probably bringing us the crickets because she's in Vermont and Jack- oh, Can you and, guys hear the crickets? Yes, yeah. uh, you can hear, I love it, I love it. I thought they were here. It's fantastic. <laughs> Which brings us to Jack who's currently in New York. So Jack, tell us in your New York. story. Uh, I started my career in Chicago. Actually, I, after high school, a friend of mine's mother gave me, saw me in a play in high school. My family didn't want me to be in show business. And uh, she gave me classes at Second City and they put me in their company when I was a kid, uh, which was actually really frightening for a lot. But it was, it was great. It was very scary. I jumped right in. Anyway, I decided I wanted, I hadn't even been to college yet. I wanted to go to college. I moved to New York. I went to NYU. And at NYU, I met David Mamet, and he was a big, mm. big mentor of mine. In fact, my first job out of college was his assistant on Glengarry Glen Ross. That's the wow. only time I ever did that. And then because of him, I got involved with starting theater companies. So I was a founding member of the Atlantic Theater Company. And then I left the Atlantic and founded Naked Angels. I don't know if you've ever heard of Naked Angels. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, so we had a good run. You know, I don't know. 13 years or something in New York. Well, it's still going. I mean, there's still reading mm -hmm. series that are going, but we did literally hundreds of plays. We had a great, great run. A lot, a lot of theater. And, and in the meantime, I did other off-Broadway shows and movies. And I was a, a little, there wasn't all that much TV in New York back then, but the, what there was, I did. You know, the sort of law and order, sex in the city kind of thing. And then um, I moved after, had a sort of bad 9-11, ended up in LA. And, um, doing television and film mostly, no theater. And then I was doing a film and the casting director said, you should read this play. I said, I'm not doing a play in LA. And he said, no, you should read it. I said, I read it. I said, I'm doing that play and I'm doing this part, God damn it. <laughs> and they better give it to me. And they did. And that was at the Ruskin Theater. And then after that, we did uh, Death of a Salesman with Lily Garlington. And Rob amazing. Morrow. I don't know if you guys yeah. saw it. She was phenomenal. So that's, so we met in the theater and, um, and I've done a lot of voice, a lot of stuff. All How's right. That? Excellent. Uh, take it away, Mr. Estes. Hi, Emmy, everybody. Emmy Award winning actor, Kim. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, so the lady who just introduced me, it's so nice to, to actually get the chance to, to be on a panel with such esteemed guests. Holy mackerel. I'm in like Wonderland here. It's like, uh, you know, I, and, I, and, and while I may have seen all of your work, uh, I'm still always impressed. I'm the baby of the group, probably, because I missed the formative years, the uh, 1990 through 2005. Those were the, the pimp and prostitute years, so I didn't get a chance to play the pimp. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I missed those because of... <laughs> Because I had another, I had another life uh, before this, and um, uh, so, so uh, my theater. I mean, I was, I started very late. So in the early two thousands, uh, I'm circling backstage west, uh, looking for anything, whether it's on stage or screen. And I just happened to be at a movie that shall remain nameless and should never see the light of day. And and I was waiting for my my scene and the lady next to me, the girl next to me was doing the same thing I was doing, circling things in backstage, with to submit when we got home. 
uh, and her name was uh, Etienne Eckert. And she said, do you need, you ever thought of joining the theater company? I said, well, it's on that list because if you, if you follow Lee Garlington, who she doesn't know this, but she's my mentor. Uh, she, if you follow uh -huh. Lee Garlington, it, it's, this is part of the things that you're supposed to do, you know, in, in, in your career, because it increases your, your circle of friends. It increases the opportunities for you as you trudge through Los Angeles. And so since I'm a native uh, born Los Angelian, it was the right thing to do. Join the Spy Ann's Theater Company that sells me and spells sideways. And it, we're a ragtag bunch of theater artists and they came out of the Howard Fine uh, acting school and they, they joined themselves uh, together. They brought me in. And so for the next couple of years, we did some plays in any house we could get into uh, raise money uh, by throwing parties and, and just did the thing you do for the love of theater. And uh, then I got involved with Vince Malaki and his group over at the, um, the theater company in Venice, the Pacific Resident Theater Company. And we did Lions and we did Henry V. We did a Homecoming Veterans Tribute. We've done Frankincense. Um, and so all these things, uh, uh, I, I um, attribute a lot of my success because these things happen. We're, we're talking about this. You never know who's in the audience. And, 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 and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you never know who's there, who's gonna call you up the next day and say, would you mm -hmm. like to come down? We got a role for you. So and there's benefits and, um, and then there, there's the fact that we're, all, that we're all aging. So we'll talk about that. Very nice to meet us, but I'm excited. So I'm going to start off, um, Angela, you said something interesting. You said you felt like um, your career has actually gotten better as you've gotten older. Can you, yeah. are you sort of referring to the fact that you no longer have to play prostitutes or pimps? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, really. Um, there was a, oh, I think everything happens and unfolds the way it should. I, I, I believe in a, a wise and loving universe, if you will. And I think uh, because my mother started her career at 44, I had went away to school. When I came back, she was playing Florence on the Jeffersons. And there was, uh, people talk about nepotism, but that wasn't available. <laughs> and and um, I was being compared a lot, but I also think I was comparing myself a lot. So mm -hmm. I had some growing and evolving to do as a woman. And, uh, and then the roles were, you know, they were evolving and they're like, you know, I did a lot. I, you talk about movies that shouldn't see the light of day. There's a couple of movies. Oh, we all have them. <laughs> but I just said, oh my God, video, what is that? And then the next thing, you know, cable, oh no. But you know, no one knew back in the 70s and the 80s that, you know, the prison movie that I was in was ever going to see, you know, <laughs> that everyone was going to see it. But seriously, um, there were roles and I just felt like they weren't, Lee, they weren't, um, they just weren't impactful and they weren't feeding me. So I found more life on stage. And, you know, I started that theater and I was also able to help other young people and adults as well get their careers going. And I found a lot of peace in that. And, uh, and also some power in that of being able to kind of decide, these are the plays we want to do. This is the story we want to tell. Um, we want to push new writers. Let's do a writer's lab. And, uh, and it was very liberating. And I think all those things grew me up so that by the time roles started evolving, I was right there along with it. And it seems like my 50s is when it really started to shift. And then my 60s, it just took off. And, and who knows why, except that I do, I think there's a couple of things going on, um, Lee, and, and you all can tell me if you think so as well. The baby boomers are, even though you've got a lot of young people behind, you know, green lighting films and behind a lot of films and who don't know, there are a lot of baby boomers who are writing and directing and the roles, they're really fighting for women uh, to be, you know, flawed and, and, and um, complex, et cetera. And because of that, and because of the roles that are now, you know, out there that I'm being offered or I have to read for, um, I'm right there with it. I'm parallel to the, you know, I've got the wisdom. I think I was looking up some of the, you know, other actors who talked about aging. And, you know, with aging, one of the things that was said is we don't value what comes with aging. We don't value 
um, the experience and the wisdom and the deep capacity for love that comes with aging that we all learn and, oh, and have. And I think I was more willing to be vulnerable in front of the camera. Uh, and I had more to give in front of the camera. And maybe that's what began to really show. And um, so the roles just started coming in. I'm not like, I'm not saying it's like a fountain of roles. However, it's definitely been, it's been good. It's been good. Do you find anything like that, Elena and Hojun for you? What's been going on in that way? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, like I said, I got here to LA in 2004. So literally in 2004, I was like playing a nurse on passions. You know what I mean? I was like, you know, here, yes, doctor, <laughs> you know, like that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, which I was like extremely grateful for, but it just felt like several years of playing a nurse. And when I would watch television and I would see, you know, who was the doctor or who was the Senator, I'd go, Oh my God, she looks like she could be my younger sister. Mm -hmm. Like seriously. And and I wasn't even that old, you know? And I was thinking, I think she should at least be in her forties. I mean, just the other night I was watching some show in the mayor of LA. I was like, she looks a lot younger than, you know, <laughs> like she's like my niece, you know, she just looks That's like a kid. She had surgery. She's... That's different. Well, maybe, I don't know, but I mean, it just seems like I'm going, she, she looks is like, a, like a kid, you know, and she's the mayor of LA and I'm going maybe. But, um, but now, I mean, I am feeling, especially like in the last couple of years, I'm feeling like there are more, the roles that I'm reading for are more like the roles that I feel are for a woman of my age. And in the past year, this happened. And so this I have- happened too. Yeah, I have completely brown hair before. <laughs> yeah, it, Kim, Kim had long hair when this whole thing started. I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, but I just decided during COVID, I was like, what the hell, you know, I can't get my hair colored. I'm just going to see what happens. And I, you know, I was like, I don't really care what my agents think, because I'm just going to do this as myself and see what happens. And I, if somebody says, oh, my God, we want you to star in this, you know, big Warner Brothers picture, but you have to color your hair. I'll color my hair. I will color it blue or pink if you want me to star in a big movie, you know, but so far, I just feel like, you know, people are like, no, your hair is great. And I'm like, yeah, because it goes with who I am as a person. And like, I love what you said, Angela, like that with age, you know, comes this like greater capacity to love and to be vulnerable. And honestly, to have to give less F's than I ever have. When yeah. I first moved here, I would go to every casting director workshop or class and they would say, you got to go in the room and don't care what they want, just care what you want. Do it for you to entertain yourself, to make yourself happy and walk out and don't care. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And I was like, no, I can't, I can't. And now I really can. Of course, the room is this room right here, but because you know, <laughs> I'm not actually going anywhere, but but I do feel like by getting older, I, I learned to go, oh, now I know who this person is, yeah. which makes me relate to that person that's on the page a lot better. And also the people that are on the other side that are deciding, I'm like, look, honey, you know what you want. Maybe you don't, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I can't guess. So here you go. And I feel yeah. much more comfortable with that now. And I think that's yeah. been helpful too. Cause I yeah. honestly, I've had the, I, I, you know, knock on plastic or something over here, but I have had the biggest year since I moved here, you know, in terms of booking, you know, TV shows and commercials and all that. It's just been amazing. Do you find a similar thing, Hojun? Um, well, uh, what can I say? So I'm here because of uh, Middlebury Film Festival. And I'm here, um, it's called The Cho Story and it's directed by a South uh, Korean uh, filmmaker um, on a Sung Park. And I've known her ever since I've, um, you know, uh, I've been living in New York and we've established this friendship, but we never got to work together until, uh, you know, I moved to LA and it so happened that she became a, a, a director and there was this story. But what drew me to this story is that not, you know, not just the fact that we know each other, but she got me, you know, she got me because, you know, just because you've aged, no matter what age you are, doesn't mean that, you know, you don't have, 
aspects of sexuality, you know, um, you know, uh, relationship issues, you know, uh, you know, marriage problems. So everything that at thirties, twenties, forties would have, you still have it when you're in 50, 60, 70 and so on. Right. So I think that that aspect that she saw in me and she told me that I was, you know, like she wants, she's like, Oh, you know, I think that you're a sexy girl and a sexy woman. And I, you know, I want to see you, you know, in these different type of characters. Well, I'm kind of mimicking her, but she doesn't really sound like that. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's what, and, and I felt so respected as a, as a human being, not just the fact that she, uh, as a female, just a human being and that, she was giving me an opportunity to um, portray a character that was, you know, well-rounded. It was three-dimensional and maybe more than that. And that, that she saw me a different side, you know, not just a mom or grandma or, you know, grocery mm-hmm. deli person or, you know what I mean? A long, or, a, you know, long, who owns a uh, laundromat. She saw me, you know, in a different, uh, different light, like a whole human being. And that's what like drew me to her. And I was like, oh, she gets me. And so that just kind of felt great. For, for those of us who aren't white, i.e. me and Jack, um, do you find more now in, you know, the current climate that you're going to play a doctor, not a black doctor. You're going to play, you know, a, an upset mother, not an upset Asian mother. Not, you know, I mean, do you feel like it's becoming a little less, you know, a, that definition? It's like, oh, look, these people can play anybody, you know, that, that mentality right. has sort of shifted a little bit in, the, in this day yep. and age. Absolutely. I, I absolutely. And I remember there was a time when you would see any ethnicity, and that used to mean we're, we're going to look at everybody, but we're still going to hire somebody white, right? And then that, but we're, but we're going to do the diversity thing. And then it started to shift. It was I'd go in a room and I might be the only black woman in there, and and I get the role, and I'm like, oh, okay, somebody's doing something different. And we found that more and more. And then and now there are also roles that were specifically she's a doctor you know, recently read for a gynecologist or an attorney or, you know, a chief of police. And, and they're looking specifically for a black woman or a woman of color. So, you know, we, we, even though there's a lot still to be done, we still have a ways to go. I, I would really be remiss to not say that I am experiencing and also benefiting from a shift because uh, mm-hmm. absolutely a shift in the kind of roles that we're being asked to play now. You know, the world, it, there was, it, that you, the industry is starting to, tr- to make an attempt, I think, to make the TV look like the world we live in. And exactly. I hope to see more of that, more of that. I, I think that too. Kim, what are you finding? Okay, so I, I need to, to throw a little bit of, of uh, gratefulness to those casting directors, uh, both on stage and screen, that were willing to go out on the edge and test to make sure. I mean, I, I, you're, you're, you're right, Angela. I would go into the room. I'd be the only black guy, and all, all everybody else is of every other ethnicity uh, and, and mostly Caucasian. And and I would go, oh, um, so so it would be, yeah. They pressed it. They sent me in there to give uh, the the casting directors or the producers and directors. Uh, a different, a, a different uh, view, or different, uh, just a change, just to experiment. So I got to give tribute to those casting directors who did that in in many years ago. Uh, pushed it, they pushed the envelope. Don't I, I hope that they're okay now? Uh, but I find that yes, uh, today there is the the thing that Angela was talking about, where you go in, and yeah, they, they're looking for the African American doctor to actually throw. Uh, a bigger diversity net into whatever production they're throwing up. So I, I think that's that's very um, noticeable today. Is it, affecting, is it affecting you at all, Jack? Well, I just I was thinking when you were talking about uh, casting, I just remember, I don't know if you remember years ago at Lincoln Center, they did a, since this is theater, they did a production of Carousel. 
I don't know if anyone remembers. This is a long time ago. And it was uh, diverse casting. And it was really one of the first big shows I'd ever seen that was completely diversely cast. And John Simon, who was a nasty person, uh, was angry that there were, because he was saying, Carousel was supposed to take place in Maine in the 1890s and there weren't all these people of color. And so Andre Bishop, I think it was Andre Bishop wrote and he said, well, why didn't he complain about the AstroTurf? <laughs> I mean, why aren't you complaining about the fact that we didn't actually get the moon, but we have a light <laughs> that's playing the moon? And I thought, right, he's painting a picture the way he wants it that's, that is relevant to an audience today the life that we live in the world that we see. And that really changed the way I personally saw casting ever since then. And um, I, I feel great about the way, I mean, look, I've, I, I have definitely lost jobs as a result, but I don't care. I think it's totally fine. I, 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 I don't, I am exactly I don't even know if I've lost jobs. I can't even say that BET, my last show was, my last series I did was on BET. So I'm not complaining. There you no, go. <laughs> but I do feel, I I'm have the happy. opposite, Everything's I have the opposite experience of Angela, which is any time for a long time that I see it open to all ethnicities. What that means to me is they're not hiring the white girl. Ah, you know, they or, don't know. or I think it could just mean they don't know what they want. I mean, sometimes yeah, they I, just I think literally because, don't know what they want. No, I think it's more like what you said. They're trying to make uh, our television sets are starting to look more like what America looks like. Like the right. world, yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And, and if you ask AOC, you know, so is our government. You know, I mean, things, there there are definite shifts that are taking place. And right. I celebrate it, you know. But, yeah. you know, it's I definitely, also, it's ahead. definitely changing. And I think it's definitely like starting from, you know, it started with nurses, you know, like all the nurses, you know, you knew that that if you got hired as a nurse on on a show, you know, you had a pretty good chance that it was going to be a, a person of color, right, to be a nurse. Now, I'm laying a lot of doctors. So I'm graduating, you know, in terms of like, you know, those kind of roles. And so now you're seeing more guest stars that are people of color. And I think when we start to have more showrunners and writers rooms mm. that are more diverse i think we're going to start seeing all the really interesting series leads because that's what you when you see a show that you go oh my god these series leads they're like they're people of color and they're they're not stereotypes and they're complicated and they're they're broken and they're fragile and they're they're heroic all wrapped up in one body it's written by people of color because it has the specificity of lived experience. And so I do believe that as more writers rooms become more diverse, we'll see more of that. Because still, if you turn on the TV, the vast majority of the shows, maybe not the ones that are, you know, getting a lot of critical acclaim, but the vast majority of shows still have white, uh, majority white leads. I but have to say, though, something interesting happened today. I flew here. I flew to New York from LA. And um, they have the TVs on the back of those seats so you can look ahead of you and see what mm -hmm. everybody, and I was really, it really made me feel good to see all these faces of color. There were mm. loads of them all over the screens. And I mm. thought that is something that I didn't used to see in that way. Yeah. And you yeah. can really see it. There were movies, there's TV shows, you know, everybody's just watching their thing. And so there are, so it was a real mix, but people on the plane wanted to watch shows that had faces of people of color. It was their yeah. choice. The screen right. was in front of them, and those are the pro programs that they picked or the movies they picked. And that made, I thought that's great. It, it's great. And even a show like um, um, Say What You Will About It, I happen to really enjoy, um, and now I can't think of the name, which is why I'm stalling, um, the one with Justin Hartley and... Uh, oh, This Is Us? This Is Us. Oh, this yeah. Is Us is, it's, it's addressing <laughs> these issues. And every Shonda Rhimes show, and I watch them all, Jesus you know, Christ. Station 19 and Grey's Anatomy. And we went through George Floyd about a year yeah. later, but we all went through George Floyd on those TV shows. So I feel like somebody like a Shonda Rhimes or an Oprah Winfrey or somebody who has the power to say, we're going to talk about this now. Like, I don't know if you have the opportunity to see Oprah's... Um, um, the me you the me you can't see, and oh, with, with yeah, yeah. Prince Harry and and Oprah, and it was about mental health and mental illness all over the world. And yes, they threw in your Lady Gagas and your Fame 
famous people, but it was mostly, this is how they do it in Zimbabwe. And this is what's happening off the coast of Greece where the Syrian refugees are landing. And I mean, it was very beautiful in terms of, I feel like everybody's consciousness, whether you want it to, or it's, it's like that old saying, as goes California, so goes the country. As goes TV, so goes the world. I mean, think about what Will and Grace did for gay America in terms of, you know, suddenly there were two men, one gay, one straight, playing gay characters, and the whole world was able to, you know, right. go, oh, well, we can celebrate that. You know, I gay, people right. Are, right. gay people are actually like us. <laughs> How about yeah, exactly. Right. Wow, it's, that's so um, weird. I also want to ask you, because like I, I, had, I had not worked in film or television for a year and a half, and I got an offer, which doesn't happen very often. And it was uh, the first scripted television show for, wait for it, the food, the food Network. So oh. I just did Candy Coated Christmas for the Food Network. So it's 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 a thing now. I feel like in some ways there's more platforms than there is excellent content. And at the same Absolutely. time, why if there's every freaking place in the world, why am I not? Why are we not all series regulars all the time? There's so many places. Right? That's my I'm question. We're not working nonstop. That's my question. <laughs> And when but you get that answer, let me know. <laughs> I'm, I'm genuinely asking, do you guys have any theories about this? I don't feel like I'm working any more than I I've used. never, I ever, ever felt I was ever employed enough. Yeah. Uh, even when I'm an employee. Yeah. So but but are, we, are we talking about gender or are we talking about age or both or? Um, I'm you know, kind of talking about everything. I've sort of gotten away from aging gracefully. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, no. Uh, you, know, I'm trying, yeah. you know me, I'm trying to stick to the subject here. Wait, what? But, it, but, but I do, find, I mean, I did nine pilots in 10 years when I was in my 30s, and I thought that was normal. I thought that's what everybody did. So it was a huge wake up call to me to suddenly hit my 40s and I'm 43 and they want me to play the mother of the 29 year old. Was like, <laughs> what? Um, what have you done in your career? I mean, I've always felt like even when I'm watching TV and I go, she's not old enough to be her mother. Why is she doing that? What is that about? I thought the, show, always... the series that really typified that was the OC. The parents and the kids were almost the same age. <laughs> I never saw that. <laughs> It was so weird. It was like creepy. But why is that a thing in Hollywood? Yeah. You know, well, Gina, I played I played John Huertas's mother on Castle, and he and I are like just like a year apart in age. And I played his mom on Castle, and so then when I was on This Is Us doing a, a you know a co star a guest star thing. Then, you know, he kept telling everybody, he's like, hey, she was my mom on Castle. And he's all in the old makeup. And everybody's going, no, shut up. And I'm like, like no. what? Like, what? I was his mom. It's, it's, it's kind of both ways for me. I've been in a couple of casting directors' offices, and they, and they, you know, have hired me for other things. They love me and blah, blah, blah. So they say, and then they're like, but you can't play Malcolm Jamal Warner's mother. And I'm like, why? You know, I'm this age and I've got a son that age. So, <laughs> it's then, too realistic. Then, yeah, you know, so there's that. And then, <laughs> and then you're right. There are times when I've gotten a role and the person whose mother I'm playing is like, you, you're not, you can't be my mom, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they have me younger. So I, but I do feel like it depends on the casting director too. And I think the people that are, you know, making this film, their reality of what, an aging woman looks like or a mother looks like and some people but also there's also this whole thing of and I hear it way too often we got to have somebody young in the mix we got to have somebody young or people aren't going to watch and mm. I'm like okay well well Grace and it was a Frank Grace and Frankie Frankie and Grace yeah. I think they shifted that paradigm you know and yeah you know I, I love when I see movies like with Diane Keaton and Keanu Reeves and what was it uh with Jack Nicholson but Keanu was a much give. younger man what was something's it called gotta, something's gotta give something's gotta give I I you know I just love that movie because there was you know it's a rom-com but there really was about celebrating age and you know moving from a man who just wants younger because that's what it is and to a woman that really 
had substance and there was a connection and you know that kind of thing. But you know who's writing? What's the way to think? Wasn't that movie just about a beautiful beach house? <laughs> you know what? You know what? Oh, but that that <laughs> oh June, go ahead. Um, well, you know, I watch a lot of um, foreign films also, uh, in addition to um, um, American films and TV shows. I just think that the Europeans are more, ex um, they accept more about age. You know, it's, it's about, because, okay, Helen Mirren, she was in yeah. Time Suspect. Come on. The okay. sexiest woman alive. Yeah. yeah, but there were so yeah. many seasons. It's like seven seasons or six seasons. And the way she, you know, she aged, it was acceptable. And she was, you know, having, you know, she, she was good at what she did, but also she, you know, was kind of messed up, and, you know, at home. So she had this, you know, a, a man that was both a little bit older, a little bit younger, around the same age, but she had a variety. You can't pigeonhole a, a, a person. And then also, uh, you know, Isabel Hubert, Hubert who's, a, yes, who's a French actress. And she's had so many different like age group of lovers. And I'm like, wow, yeah. Yeah. Like, why not? Yeah. And look at Emmanuel so, Macron and his wife. We're all those yeah, friends. Yeah, you know, right. So yeah, it's the opposite, right? Those so, Frenchies. Yeah, so why is it acceptable in America? Right. So well, yeah, and I remember right. once saying, I agree. I remember once saying to the wonderful character actress Grace Zabriskie, and I was complaining bitterly about playing the mother of a young man who was six years younger than me. And she looked at me and she said, Lee, I just played the mother of a man who was four years older than me. And I went, I'll shut up now. Okay. <laughs> I'll be quiet now. <laughs> um, we have actually a question from one of our panelists. And I think it's, I'm going to divide it into two questions. The first is, do any of you feel any pressure to look and act younger in the in the world of show business? Oh yeah, I was going to say in the world of my family, they're trying to make me act older. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna I was going to showbiz on this one. Oh, okay. I, you know, I won't I won't say that that I I got pressure, but when I did talk to my uh, to my manager about about my hair. You know, I said, let me tell you what's happening mm. over here at my house. My hair is getting gray. And sh she said, well, I'm going to tell you what I tell all of my female clients. In this town, you need to stay as youthful looking and as attractive looking as you can for as long as you can. That's what she said. And she said, well, I know you're going to do whatever you're going to do. I was like, well, yeah, you know me. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. So, but, but that's what, she, that was her advice that she said that she gives to all of her female clients to stay as young and youth and as young and attractive as you can, as long as you can. Um, and so I was like, huh, now I moved here in my forties. So my attitude was like, when I got here, I was like, I'm already old, you know, because everybody was already like, oh, women over 40 can't get arrested in Hollywood, right? And that, that was the, the, you know, the way people talked. And so I didn't come here when I was 18 to try to get an ingenue role, blah, blah, blah. I got here and I was in my 40s. And even though I was a probably a young looking 40s, I was already considered, you know, like aging well, out. Middle aged. Middle aged, yeah. So um, anybody else want to hit that one? Well, I feel the Mary pressure, but... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, hold you. No, no, no. I was just thinking that maybe that um, maybe we need to sort of nurture the playwrights or uh, and the writers. You know, maybe if in some sense that we had a relationship with them, then because you know these up and coming writers, they're the ones that are going to be, you know, maybe uh, your employer. Um, but I think that maybe if we had a, a developed a relationship that maybe they'll uh, know our story, what we're going through, and maybe in some sense, they might find it interesting. And, you know, I mean, look at all of us, right? We have such immense life, life story, and I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, unique tales to be told on, on paper. 
So I'm not sure. Maybe if we nurture um, having a relationship that, you know, maybe the, the dialogue would change. I think the dialogue needs to change. Mm. And maybe it starts with the writer because that's what we need. We need dialogues. I couldn't agree. For the characters. Yeah. And it's oh, exciting. Do you guys because, ever? Oh, I'm so sorry, Hojun. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, no. I was I gonna say, do, do you, you guys know. ever get that kind of pressure to, you know, you, you gotta look younger, you gotta play younger. Let's, uh, you know, Kim, do they tell you dye your hair? Uh, I. Uh, <laughs> Jack, do they tell you grow your hair? I mean, do you go through any <laughs> of that kind of stuff? I really, I really enjoy um, taking on the 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 uh, the older guy. I mean, I, it's just really weird, but I've got this dad thing going on. You know, my father, uh, I, I, um, I love roles that I can take that, that history that's embedded in me from my dad and bring that to the, to the screen. I love that stuff. That just, that is like the cat's meow to me. Mm -hmm. And I can, bring the, I can bring that home. So I haven't, as of yet, Lee, uh, been told that, Oh yeah, you gotta play ten years younger, or you gotta dye your hair. I think I was, I think I did that one time in my career very early on. I took the gray out, but that was before COVID. But now after COVID, I think it's here to stay. I think for me, it's age has always been a weird thing because I've had this voice since I was sixteen. So <laughs> I'm serious. So I, you know, people have never known what to do it when I was a kid. You know, I, it's always been. I don't think I, I was ever the age I was supposed to be. So I, um, I can tell you the thing that upset me was when IMDb started telling everyone that. <laughs> because then I felt like, oh well before you didn't know so you kind of said you know whatever you know you people say how old are you 30s or you know 30ish on the way to 40s you know i just would never tell anybody and then all of a sudden everyone knows and and so it and now i definitely do feel like people go oh really cuz i got i got a birthday next week and happy birthday I'm, thank you happy birthday i'm yeah. going to be 62 what so ah. really it goes on yeah, and so when I see that, there you go. So when, but I'm just saying. So when I go, I'm go, I get, I go on break on casting sometimes. I just don't look like everybody. Mm -hmm. But I felt like that. I, I felt like that my whole life. I've always mm -hmm. felt like I, I. It's funny when you said you went in and you're the only black person there. I've always felt like, oh, I'm, whatever it is, I'm the only one of whatever that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that. You know, I remember once going on a commercial audition and I had two commercial auditions in New York. One of them, I had to wear a black leather jacket, black motorcycle, uh, black je jeans, white t-shirt, black motorcycle jacket, motorcycle boots. The next one, I had to be dressed like Pee Wee Herman, you know, bow tie, you know, Poindexter. And I thought, they don't know what to do with me. They, and and, and the more, there were more, more motor, motorcycle-y guys than me. And there were more poindexter -y guys than me. And you got I it. I've always just kind of had to be me. And I, <laughs> what you were saying earlier about going in there and saying, this is it, that's kind of what I do. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Well, and I feel that way too. I mean, uh, I think Elena has this beautiful silver hair. I have mm -hmm. this like amazing white hair in front, but then I'm completely gray in back, you know, and, and it's that thing of like, I had this woman sitting next to me who was probably my age and, and she, she turned to me and they didn't, English was not their first language. They, they were speaking Farsi and she said, you know, your hair is so beautiful. And I said, do you know what you have to do to have hair like this? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just, you it's just go. But I do it feel like, I feel like I'm like you, Elena. I'm not, I, I, pardon, effort. I don't care. I'm not dyeing my hair unless I'm getting paid to. Right, right. You know, just, I don't want to do it anymore, you yeah. know? So I, 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 and I feel like that gives, in fact, that was the second part of the question. The second part is, are you happy with where you are now? And I think oh. Andrew spoke to that so beautifully. New York is very yes. hot. But, yeah. <laughs> but as an actor, oh, I oh. do feel like I am, I, I'm not necessarily booking like I used to, but I walk out of a room now and it's not, well, partly I don't need 
the money anymore. We're at that, yeah. at that state of life where I have my pension and blah, blah, blah. But I do feel much more like I connect with the character. I do the work I want to do. And I walk out of that room, which is this room with a Zoom, but I go, I feel good about that. You know, yeah, and what yeah. happens is kind of yeah. business. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know, I, I've come to realize, we were talking about this the other day, my inner circle, um, I have I have some wonderful actor friends and I also have some wonderful non-actor friends and um, they're kind of like my inner circle and the kind of stuff they do, social worker, attorney for foster children, therapists, et cetera, their stuff is so real and so serious that, oh, I didn't get that role just does not seem you know, like a big deal, right? And then also being a grandmother, I've got three grandchildren, wow. a mother who, again, is, you know, is a celebrity, but also who was aging. And she's uh, 30 times three, because you cannot tell her her age. She, if you ask her her age, she will tell you, I am 30, born in 31. You do the math and don't tell me, right? And then on the other hand, I will tell my age in a minute, right? And because I, you know, I, and because it's on IMDb, so oh, there's, yeah, there's, there's right. there you go. That's a, <laughs> you know, I'm really choice. proud. Might as well like be proud of it. Earn some stripes, you know. And I'm really to answer that question. I'm very happy with where Angela is as a human being, as a woman today, and that's who I carry in the room. And like Elena, like you said, you want me or you don't. That day, mm -hmm. that day of, um, I'll never forget just sharing this. Years ago, I was, I was, I was auditioning to, um, to um, um, what do you call it when you're, I can't think, well, I can't think of the name right now, when you understudy Felicia Rashad. And I was younger and just not really knowing my worth. And I tried to go in there and do Felicia Rashad. <laughs> Whatever that you know, I, just, I just didn't know, right? It was just one of them that was so bad. And halfway through, they were like, thank you, Angela. And, and I was like, but, 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 but I didn't get to cry yet because I could really, I, I could cry, right? I, I didn't even get to that. And I remember walking out of there like this. And, you know, and, you know, I coach actors and what happened today too. And one of the things I learned and I tell actors, especially new ones all the time, is that if you go in there being anyone else, they will never see you. You, you left the room and they never got to feel your breath, see, feel your footprint. They never got you. Right, so it, it, it's being okay with you. It's an inside job that you take that in the room. And Lee, you said something I thought was really important. Somebody said, you gotta have some F you money, you know? And, and <laughs> back in the day, there were many days I had to have a job. I had to finally just make peace with that. Okay, well, I may have to work a part-time job or whatever for the rest of my life because, but I love acting. I was somewhere and I heard this older actress and woman's, you know, older at the time to me, she said, I just gave myself permission to struggle because I love acting. So I said, okay, whatever I have to do, if I have to do this gig over here, do that, I'm gonna do it because, sorry about that. I'm gonna do it because I love it. And I think that was when, that was the breaking point for me. And then one day I was able to leave that job, you know, and never look back. But it was, but you gotta have some F you might. So when you say you have enough money, I think when you walk in there, it's like, I love this, I wanna do it. If you got me and you feel me, great. If not, there's something else coming. And yeah. know, knowing that, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a freedom in that. Yeah. Does anybody have anything they want before I move on here? Does anybody having a thought you want to share that you haven't said yet? Anything? Anything? Except Jack, right? I'm just gonna shut up. I'm like, stop it. Nobody shuts up. Um, so one of the things I'm, I'm wondering about too, getting older, aging gracefully or not gracefully in Hollywood. Um, I do, I do believe I also, that all the classes I took and all the techniques mm. I learned and all the training and, and people will say, well, what, what do you use when you work? And I'm like, I use whatever works. You know? That's right. Mm. I use whatever I need <laughs> That's to. Right. That's right. And I have to say, I had this one experience being late for an audition, going to the casting, you know, being five minutes late at the casting director's office and then finding out they'd moved it across town to the <gasps> studio Lord. and literally running Ooh. across the lot because the producers were waiting oh, for me, which is the kiss of death, a sheen of sweat 
co you know, covering my body, going in to read for the bad guy. And I had this thought come to me, which is, well, what if she thought it was funny that she made this guy kill himself? You know, and I don't know where it came from, had nothing to do with any acting technique. And I was already late. I was in the like, fuck it, who knows what's gonna, you know, they don't even <laughs> want me now anyway. And I went in there and I, you know, I'm like barely able to not breathe hard. <laughs> and all of a sudden my character, and I've been caught at this point in the show, and I started laughing. And I mean, I started laughing hysterically <laughs> because at this point I had nothing to lose. No, like she's and I watched the producer like do this, go from this to <clears throat> <laughs> like what is she doing now uh, that's not anything anybody ever taught me in class and i also right. feel like being an actor of a certain age now if i get an impulse yes do you, do you feel like you're more likely to want, like i i used to do make a choice and then say do you want it another way do you want me to do anything else now i'm like no this is the way i want to do it if you like it great if you don't bye-bye but i think that's the thing about doing theater I, I, is that you just, when you're in front of the audience, you can test things out and you feel it as it goes and you know what you're doing. And so you do new things all the time and, and things just come out and you realize you can just trust that. If it's real to that day and it's real to the way you feel that day and you can, you can make it work, it works. I, that's why I love theater. Yeah. The audience, the audience always tells you, you can feel it. Right, right. Or stand and up. And theater's so scary. I've done stand up too. Stand up's yeah. fun. Yeah, oh that's God. scary. Oh, that's, that's scary. Fun. But speaking about theater, um, oh, that's scary. Uh, yeah, because you have a relationship, even though when you're doing a stand up, I mean, you have a relationship, right? Because you're you're waiting for the audience to respond. And also at the at theater, you know, you're waiting for the audience to respond, and sometimes they don't respond or they're falling asleep. And now when Lee Garlington's on stage. <laughs> well, sorry. I'm sure that not when any one of us is on stage. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, but you, I, I think you just have to pick yourself up and say, hey. I'm going to try and make that person, I'm not going to try, I'm going to make that person wake up and say, look at me, you know? So um, it's, it's, I, I think it has to do with age and confidence. It doesn't go in hand in hand, hopefully, uh, in acting and that, that you are able to sort of like brush off some of the, you know, the cowards and say, hey, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Do you feel, because and th and this is a question for all of you, uh, and Elena sort of touched on a little bit. Do you, I, I am, um, I have never, I've talked to actresses who are like, I do my audition, I walk out of the room, I'm done, I never think uh -huh. about it again. And I'm like, you're from another planet. Okay? <laughs> And I bet you carry a purse this big and your mother is your best friend. Okay, I don't know who you are. But do you find, I do find that I think disappointment is probably one of my least favorite mm -hmm. feelings on the planet. You have so much of it by definition in the business of show. I mean, do you find that your coping mechanisms for that have improved or shifted as you've gotten older? Oh, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, I think uh, I think COVID uh, and uh, and Delta and Epsilon and Lambda <laughs> will, will will make us all or have if they have. Do we really or, have all those coming up? Oh yeah, yeah just, and oh, then geez, there's more after God. that. Yeah, just be careful. So I mean, all those things make you realize that you know it's it's okay, and it shifts that thing, that confidence piece that says. Uh, instead of, I, I hope they will like me, to, you know, I'm okay if they don't. Mm -hmm. So it, it's yeah, like- it's huge. Yeah, it, and it's, and it's uh, I mean, this is, this is a, the, 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 where we are today is different than where we were 10 years from now, 10 years ago. Yeah, and so it, it has brought a, a new realization to, to, for me, especially the, the confidence level, it's it's just like you, Lee, being in this room right here, doing doing all these auditions that I've done that I've done in this room. It's like okay, I, I'm really, I'm okay. I'm, I'm not gonna. 
if, if they like me, they like me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. But the move on is different than when it was in person because that was personal. It's like you're you're in the room and you're you're winning the room, and then that's a different defeat. Yeah. yeah. Today's today's no, defeat. Yeah. yeah. That, is a that's, little different. That's true yeah. because when you were in the room, I mean, then sometimes you were, you know, this was me. I would be in the room and I would either walk out and go. Oh, what the hell did I just do? What what the <laughs> hell was that? Oh God, I'm moving back to Kansas. And no, I've never been to Kansas, but you know, I'm like moving back to Kansas and I like, but and the other times I'd go, oh my God, you know, the casting director gave me a little wink and she was like, ah, and I thought, oh, everyone's gonna be and then you never hear from them. And then crickets, it felt very crickets. personal because it was like really crickets. And so, but now it really does feel like you're like here's a gift, you know, and that little we transfer goes off to your agent. You just go, right. bye bye. And <laughs> like you said, because we are living in this crazy time of COVID, I mean, I literally now I cannot stop to think about it. And, and, you know, like you say, you know, your friends are, are social workers and you're like, oh, my, my, I didn't, you know, book that job. You know, it's, yeah, if I don't book this job, terrible things are happening to people you know, two blocks from my house. So right. I have to be like, here's a little gift. I send it up through the ether and then oh, I got to go cook dinner for my husband. And, you know, I mean, I literally have to go do stuff and I have to, you know, it's gone from my mind. When somebody goes, oh, what was your audition that, that you were working on the other day? And I'm like, ah, oh, what was it? What was it? What was it? What, which one? What, I'm not, what was it? Right, and right. I'm like, they're like, oh, you right. were like a, a mom. And I'm like, yeah, I need more. I mean, I have to go look at my tapes. <laughs> That right. and that for me is a huge mindset win, you know, to not be, right. I was the girl that I'd be driving home the whole time. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Oh my God. Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do blah, 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 blah. And then two days later, I'm still like, God, I'm such an idiot. Why? Oh my God. I'm not that girl anymore. And you know, like I said, I haven't been, I haven't been here that long. So that girl wasn't a girl. She was a middle-aged woman, but still, I think that that COVID has helped me kind of calm down and really really like you know you, you know what's important and then it comes down into your gut and you know what's important and that's where i think i'm going. right and i want to say i want to jump in and the other side of it is is you know this is the other side and i think it's it's based on also the project and you know you i read for mm -hmm. something that you know i was pinned for it was going to italy i mean hell yeah oh. i wanted that job oh. i didn't get it i'll pay I was, them i was like yeah <laughs> i was like I didn't get it. And you know, and your manager and your agents, and they're like, oh my God. And and um Ho June, uh, you know, I coached with with uh um I coached with you guys for that role and, and didn't get it. And so not with me. You know, <laughs> not with you, right. But uh, with Guy, with, with yes. a partner with Guy. And um, you know, there are certain roles you feel in your bones, in yeah. your bones. And you know, I still I still you know, struggle a little bit, you know, uh, for the most part, I'm where everybody else is. It's like, all right, move on. What was that? I, what did I read for? Mm -hmm. And then there are other, other times when I'll read, you know, have a few in a row and they'll, they'll be so emotional that when I don't get them and then the next audition comes, there's a part of me that's just kind of tired. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I, let me pull it back together to do this, this thing. And my son one day was looking at this one audition and I had to cry and all of that. And he just said, wow, you all are some really special people who can just keep pulling it up like that and pulling it up. And, but there's this, this thing, you know, they say, uh, it's not rejection, it's direction. And sometimes protection. And I yeah. love that because what's for you is for you. And my quick little story, and then I'll hush on this, is I had read, read for about four things, and I really wanted them all. And, and they were really nice roles. And I didn't, didn't get tested for something. Didn't get them. And I was just at that point where, you know, I, I hate to get to this point, but I got to this point where I had to call the agent and manager. I'm like, okay, just talk to me. Are you guys looking at my tape? What am I, am I missing? You know, what, what's going on? You know, do I need to shift? And that's why I, even though I coach, I don't get coached because I want to not be in my bubble. Right. And I just, they said, Angela, you, you know, it works. It's great. Blah, blah, blah. You know what it is. And I'm like, okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. And then here came, this is us. And, and it was this great role on this is us where I played Randall's mother. Right. And, um, 
And I had written, I had journaled that I was looked that, you know, I kind of like, I'd say thank you as opposed to please let me, you know, I'm like, thank you for a role that just scares me, takes me to the edge of my crap with people um, that, with other actors I admire, you know, on shows like This Is Us. I put like This Is Us, right? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then suddenly I get it. And it was like an affirmation and, and a confirmation, like, you know that you're good. You know that you... Mm -hmm. You're bringing it in. They're just going to be, and so I, I, I wanted to say that, Lee, because yes, while I'm also like you, Elaine, like, okay, what, what did I read for? And, and you know, it comes and goes, and, and reality is, this is not brain surgery. I, nobody's going to die because I didn't get this role. There are those sometimes that you know that you're if like somebody okay. would die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, trust me, there's a lot of gallows humor to get through show business. Yeah. <laughs> well, I well, I think it's also because we're, you know, we're using ourselves as an instrument. We're not using like a, you know, a, a piece of paper or, you know, a canvas. We're we're it. It's us. So yeah. which we, we try not to take it so um, you know, personal or 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 be uh, what is it? Um, Exp, you know the full experience of it but sometimes you can't help it you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So it's, I, I, go ahead i'm just saying that it's just like the it's it's part of being an artist it, you're gonna get hurt sometimes and you, yeah. you wish mm -hmm. that you don't but sometimes you really really want it and you think that you did a really great job and but you don't get it why right you don't know <laughs> So, but you know, I think that what it does is it prepares you for whatever is coming next. <clears throat> Might be not the needed next, but like Angela was saying, it could be, you know, the next two jobs, three jobs, or maybe next year. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. just keep the hope. Just keep um, going. We, we have a comment from one of our viewers, and it, Bill doesn't have a question, but he says, and I quote, I don't care if these folks stay on topic or not. This is the most fun I've had in a while. I just want to break out a six pack and a bottle of Pinot Noir and a lot of Le Bon Ton Rolé. Can't y'all do a show together? We could do it yes. at SWT. <laughs> Yes. Maybe Marilyn would do it at PRT. Many of my best memories of shows were shows Kim did at PRT. It's such a pleasure to see uh, him unscripted. That's so nice. uh, um, We have another question, which is, um, do you find that you are allowed to play a larger age range on stage than you are on film mm -hmm. and television? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know about I don't know. I think I am. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did just recently play a. Uh, well, I, when I I played the uncle of the of the lead in Henry V, so I had to have been of age, and uh, as Exeter, and um, that to me was like a blast. I had a ball being right. the old guy, you know, the old warrior. Uh, who would come in and threaten the king of France. That to me was like, yeah, I could do that. I'll do that all year long, if you let me. When well, I want to circle back. To, I just want to circle back to theater. It's been a while. I was, I've was. i been talking about it and talking about it. So hopefully I'm talking up a role. But I, but Lee, I have a friend who does a lot of theater, Kim Staunton, an amazing actress. And um, she said she that's what she says she gets to play a, a, a range a wider range of age but also non-traditional roles roles that normally would be like you talked about carousel but for someone white she gets to play them you know and so um i'm oh god i'm, I'm a little terrified and excited about getting back on the stage again don't you feel well, like lynn manuel miranda has completely changed just the universal definition of what you can and can't do on stage that that we now have permission for, I mean. I hope so. Part of the magic of Hamilton, which I just had the honor of seeing, I just went to the invited dress rehearsal. Oh. I've now mm. seen it three times with three different casts. And I just, wow. it's like, that is just, like. Uh, where was the invited dress? Uh, the Pantages. Oh, oh, for, yeah. So it's, but it's that thing of like, it's like, 
okay, writers, you can do whatever the fuck you want to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The great yeah. thing about that show, too, is that if you think about it, what, you know, between what happened on stage and the film, there's really not much difference. The staging was so good that mm -hmm. it filmed, and most, it doesn't always work out in theater, but that particular production, it, it, I saw it at the public. I got to see it all that long ago. Wow. And, and, it's, and it's really the same production. I mean, the set's the same, everything's the same. They just have a couple different, the cameras come in and out, but they didn't really restage it, quote unquote. I mean, they must have a little bit. Yeah. But it just, it translated so well. I thought that really held up for multiple mediums. Yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think that's one of the things you get in theater that you can get in film and television, but not the same way, which is magic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, when you're in the room, it's there's it's a yeah. it's room where it happens. So addictive. That's right. Room where it happened. Yeah, I it mean, is addictive. It's 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 like I've gone broke doing theater, so I know all about it. Yeah, you know, just keep going. A friend of mine said, Why don't you do theater?" Literally, a friend of mine said this because she knew I was having financial issues. She said, "Watching you do theater is like watching somebody jump out of a second story window, land on the cement, brush themselves off, laugh, and go back in the house and run back up the mm -hmm. stairs." Yeah, yeah. She goes, you gotta stop doing it. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you can't, can't do this anymore. You can't. You're too good to stop doing it. But I, all, and I also feel not only about age, but I'm gonna get to play roles on stage that I'm not nearly high enough up the food chain to play on film and film. Ah. Mm -hmm. so there's, mm -hmm. there's yeah. a certain freedom yeah. there, you know. To yeah. Get to do those kind of roles. Yeah. Yeah. I could see. Uh, I mean, we're talking about age and race. So um, there's a play that I, I, I don't know, I kind of feel like I should play and I want to play is, um, you know, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Oh mm. my God, do right? it. Love do it. it. Well, don't get so excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, because um, uh, I'm not sure if you can get the rights. Because oh. right now, yeah. So I think that is still into play, you know, no pun intended, but what do we do? Well, what do you think about that? I mean, do you, yeah. how, how are you all feeling about in terms of getting the rights to things, producing your own stuff, getting writers to write? I mean, do you feel like that's something, I know Angela sort of was indicating you, you've sort of stepped into that arena. Um, and I, 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 I have a writer's group that's been together for since 1987. It's called the Writers and Actors Lab. And we do theater and stuff. Uh, we, mm -hmm. We've watched all sorts of shows be created and go on the air, actually, writers who've come through the group. But I, I, don't, I don't have the, the gene, Angela, to want to really get in there. And I have produced one thing because I wanted it to come to life and that was the only way as I put my own money into it. But yeah. how do you feel about that option, you all, about stepping behind the wheel, so to speak, to get something made you wanna do? It's, you know, I got a chance to work with Ruby D. Bless oh. her soul, who was amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was- Force of nature. Uh, and um, we were together for about two weeks and during that time I had direct, directed a, a film in Africa on the women's empowerment movement. And it was more like a, a documentary, if you will. But I, so as I, I, came, I came back, I got that role. I was with her while we were waiting for the film to come back and then I was gonna leave and go edit. And she said something to me I'll never forget. And she said, and she said, so you, you directed this. And she said, do you plan to keep doing it? And I said, well, I, I want to. And actually I didn't do very much after that, but I'm looking at it again. But she said, we need smart, women behind the camera telling stories. She called me daughter. She said, daughter, I hope that you will, you know, um, you know, be that person who tells our stories, right? Women's, and she was talking about women stories in particular. She said, because we tell stories, not just about women, but she said, we tell stories from our heart. And, um, and I think I just felt like, I, Ruby D said, I, I better do this. And so, if whether I'm directing or writing, I do write, I um, I feel a responsibility, if you will, but also I 
I love that responsibility. I, I embrace it of uh, moving behind the camera and trying to make a difference because in front of the camera, I, it's up to someone else to choose me and all of that. But I mm -hmm. feel like I have more power to kind of author you know, um, the, the, the lane that I'm in, if you will, and to and, and impact other people and bring other actors in the fold as well. So I want to do more of that myself, actually, at this age. Good. And I bet, Hojun, I'm thinking about what you said. I bet if Edward yeah. were alive today, he'd say, fucking A, give her the rights. Yeah. Really? Because he you was that so? kind of guy. I do, oh, but wasn't yeah. there controversy about um, yeah, there was his, a production where it's his an family won't like his yeah. family that owns the rights or the foundation or the whatever the legal entity the that owns the rights yeah. will not allow it to be done uh, like colorblind casting or whatever. Because really? they, yeah, because they say that like it's really important, you know, the the race of the people is really important, and so if you put in like what, what was the production they wanted to do like with a mixed race younger couple or something it, it was uh edward albert's uh who's afraid of virginia Woolf? i know they but i mean african-american they wanted to put a like a black person in as one of the young people and they said that yes. would just because of the timing of you know nick. just the set in the that time name is nick yeah yeah, yeah. That, that it would yeah. just you know mess up Change the whole it. dynamic and it's like no it's, it's people. true well yeah it, well that's scary yeah. 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 It's that carousel argument. Who cares? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Same thing. Right. Right. Well, that was one of the great things about well, which was also Shonda Rhimes, the um Yes. The what's yeah. the thing? On that, Netflix. Oh yeah. Bridgerton. Yes. Bridgerton. 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 Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. So I mean, everybody That's loved right. it because it was just so cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. What difference right. does it make? It's it cool. Doesn't make a difference. Yeah. But I, think I mean, you're if you're right. making a historical we, yeah. document, then maybe. But this is entertainment. Everyone should calm down. <laughs> yeah, <we're>, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Really, seriously. Right. But I think That's you're right. right, Lee. You know, if I think that if um, um, if um, he was alive now, I think he would change because I know that he re reworks. You know, his plays. Right. He didn't even rework the zoo story, and he became he 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 did the prelogue instead of. To yeah. the story. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know. And he was, I think, a fairly different. openly gay man. Yes. I, I think he had, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I think his sensibilities would be sort of awakened, shall we say. I won't use the other word, the woke word, but we'll just say awakened. Awaken <laughs> woke is too annoying now. Um, <laughs> um I want to ask one other question. Um do you find as you get older and you're working and you're continuing to work, do you find less drive, more drive, the same drive? Depends yeah. on what I'm on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate a tiny bit there? No, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I think I have the same. I, I think I still attack something the same way I always have. I think I still want it. Okay. Mm. For sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Uh, I can't say I'm quite as driven as I was when I was younger. I mean, well, I, I really guess, love. My question is, okay, gives me I something. got a question for you. Why is that? Um, uh, because I feel like a lot of people go into show. Correct me if I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen, but I think a lot of actors go into show business because there's something missing. There's a hole, and they want to fill it with, you know, creativity or fame and fortune or power or whatever. There's a lot of you know components and i think as you go through life you know i'm a i'm a mom i'm a wife i'm a homeowner i'm i'm a settled person i have lots of activities and hobbies and actions and my my need to mm. you know perform and be recognized and validated is less doesn't mean i don't want it and don't enjoy it when well, it's i mean there. it is look it's crazy i mean it's crazy sooner or later you look around and you go this is just nuts I mean, what, what, it's true, you know, but, but I think, I, I mean, years ago we built it, we built a theater and I remember thinking, okay, so we built a space so that strangers could come in and look at us. <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, that's like, that's crazy town. <laughs> so once you kind of come to grips with that's the tr reality of it, but I think you, I, my, I think you have to have a break somewhere inside there to be in this business, whatever that break is. <laughs> I don't necessarily think, I've always been afraid to identify, I just let it go. But I mean, I do think, I, I, I think there's something, there's some, some, the drive, I, I, I don't know. There's something about performing that that makes you whole in a funny way. Yeah. What, yeah, about, the, yeah. what about the rest of you? Do you have same more or less? I think. I mean, I've never had like an attachment to the results. You know, to the outcome. Like I've never felt. And Elena, you are annoyingly healthy. No, I think I feel the same way. I'm not. I don't think I'm. I, think, I don't I mean, think I'm I started, result enough oriented. I should be more result oriented. Well, exactly. And and I asked somebody one time, I said, you know, because, you know, you ever, you take these classes and they're like, OK, so, you know, what's your vision of your life? And, you know, I have a friend who's like, I'm going to be, you know, number one on the call sheet on a sitcom and I'm going to be blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, what? man, like, I don't have those kinds of goals. Like, I can't write those goals. And I was like, what's wrong with me? You know, I was like, my goals are, I want to have fun. I want to keep learning. I want to meet more cool people. I just want to be, you know, performing whether it's on, you know, whether it's on stage or in a reading or, or uh, you know, in a show. And, you know, and somebody, this coach said to me, other people work so hard to get where you are, where you started, you know, and that's just because I started in my right. 40s. It was my third career. And so I think I, I didn't come at it like this is what I need to get. And the results that I need, the having fun, meeting cool people like tonight, these are all my these are my results for this week is right here on this on this Zoom stage, you know, these six little boxes. And and it's really, really is. And if next week I get to do a commercial, that's gonna be my results, you know. And if I go two weeks or three weeks or four weeks without an audition. I have so much other stuff that doesn't everybody has do that? Do acting, huh? Doesn't everybody go three weeks without an audition? No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, no, I'm saying that like, but I'm not going to be thinking mean? like, oh, when's my next audition? When's my oh, next no. audition? Because I don't, I don't think like that because I have. No, to... I agree. I'm with you 100. percent I yeah. think it's, I think it's the need to express yourself, whatever that means. Whatever right. that means, right. exactly. That and right, means. we're gonna, we have to redo our deck because it's rotting. And so I'm like all excited about doing the nerd plans for that. Sure. You know, that's that's creativity for me is designing our deck. It is creative, to... but that is yeah. creative. Well, okay, so let me ask something else. Um, I have yet to meet an actor. Okay, one actress, but that's just because she was being stubborn. But I have yet to meet an actor or an actress who only did theater or film or television. I've yet to meet an artist, an actor who wasn't, they didn't also sing or dance or draw or play a musical oh, instrument or paint or create in some other way. So I know each one of you has another art form. Go, Angela, what's yours? Draw and write songs. And Elena. Elena, besides Dex. Uh, yeah, besides <laughs> Dex. I mean, I, I write and then uh, I, I, I've gone to those painting classes and I'm not bad, but I don't do it on a regular basis. And I play the piano. Ho Jun. Painting and drawing. Jack. I write and I take dance class three or four times a week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Look at crazy. you. Kim, what's your? I write and I get on board uh, ships for periods of time. Yeah, well, that's part of your work, though. You do that as a career, also. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, yeah, that's and and let me ask one another question because you know this is my job is to ask the question. Um, <laughs> I am fine. Like today, I uh, I turned down. Um, I just decided I wasn't in the right space to do this particular audition. And I said, I'm not available. Are you more likely now at this point to have more discretion than you did when you were younger? Absolutely. I just turned yeah. something down too, I you know? Too. Yeah. And, I didn't do and to your, You didn't do it. You didn't do it. No. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You know, you, you know and, and to your point, your life gets full and there's other things that matter just as much or maybe even more, but you love, I'm like, I love what I do. And for me, um, 
like I said, my stuff really started happening later. So I do have a lot of drive, probably even more than when I was younger in terms of the work because it's so fulfilling to me now, the kind of work I get to do. However, um, again, I'm a, you know, I'm a, a, a mother, I'm a, the, the daughter of an icon who needs a lot of things. And, you know, I'm enjoying this, these, these years that, that we have together. And, you know, I mean, I could leave before her. However, you know, she's 90. So it's, there's this mother daughter healing, beautiful thing that's kind of going on with us. And I just love that. And, you know, so when it gets to, um, you've got to do this audition and you need it tomorrow and it's last minute. And I look at it and I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. You know, I need to be up in the morning doing this with my mom or I got that to do, or I just gave them a couple of really I good ones. There's power in that. Yeah. Yes, it is. It mm -hmm. is. Yeah, that's I right. I do. I mean, that's just, that's just basic self-care. It is. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And I used to drive myself crazy. As a matter of fact, Guy told me that whole June. Um, you know, you don't have to do every, every, I used to, everyone that came, I was trying to do it. Even when I thought they were stupid. I'm like, I don't even, I don't like this, <laughs> you, you know? Now, it's like, no, I'm not doing it. Because there are, well, come funny, on, let's just be honest. I, there's, there's some stupid stuff out there. Come on, oh, you, yeah. you're like, what is well, this you get certain you know? parts. You were talking about playing hookers and stuff. I used to just get parts of like, I used to say the guy who came in and said no, for whatever reason. <laughs> I said no to someone, you can't do this, you can't have that, you can't. And I just said, I'm not doing that anymore. Right, you sound like Tootsie. Guy, I am not the guy who says no, forget it. I'm the guy who says <laughs> yes. And I'm a likable character. Do you That's remember right. because he's a nice guy, not because he's a jerk, because I have yeah. this voice and I'm not doing that. <laughs> We have a question from one of our audience. Uh, a gentleman would like to know, would you rather rehearse or perform? I'd rather rehearse before I perform. I'm not going to perform. I don't know how much I really want to rehearse, but I definitely want to rehearse. But I love the idea of rehearsal oh, yeah. for performance. I have to say, I'm one of those actors who just. I'm you love sure. it. I hate it. I hate Do you? rehearsing. I love performing. I hate rehearsal. <laughs> I get so bored and impatient. <laughs> I don't always show it, and I've, I've learned to control myself, but inside I'm going, oh my God. Well, I think I, I love <laughs> rehearsing for plays, but I don't like rehearsing so much, like, you know, when you on the set doing film or, or television because well, it's a time constraint and yeah you, you, it, there's no leisure of time whereas theater like you, you, yeah, you know theater you do I just like um, to know what's going know. on so I can make some choices you know yeah me too yeah, well, yeah. I just want to know it's, it doesn't have to be a huge amount but I'd like a little yeah I agree. It's yeah, a big yeah. shock, I have to say, coming from I, the background. I like rehearsing when you're running through. It's the finding the blocking and having it change. And the actor say, well, why would I say that then? And it's just like, oh, <laughs> well, you know why you would that's say certain it. people you might down. be working just with, Lee. Say it. This Lee, is it. Those, those might be some of your fellow thespians. Yeah, right? no, I, th I think that the rehearsals that I like are the ones like the, like when you had the experience in your audition where you're like, what if she thinks it's hilarious? Like th those are the kinds of rehearsals that I like or when I just go, what if she's like really like she has a bad headache and she just like, oh no, what if she like is secretly, you know, just like about to burst out laughing and, you know, and it's so bad that she's laughing. Like those are the kind of rehearsals that I enjoy. Cause yeah, the ones where it's like, trying to make it right are so boring and not fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not very successful yeah. in my, yeah, my book but the ones agree, that are most successful are the ones where you're like why is she like this because i used right. to read the the right. breakdowns and go how can i make her be this way and now i'm like oh no 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 why is she like this why why did why is she austere why is she serious yeah, why is question. she funny also, i you just know? that's a really interesting thing another thing about theater is that we used to play t pay attention to stage directions because mm. that, you know, we would more. look, and then, and and I mean, excuse me, we didn't pay attention to the stage right. director, right? We, right, because right. this was our production, so we were doing it our way. We had a director, and then I moved to LA, and all of a sudden, you have to pay really attention to what those stay, what they say, what they give you, because you don't have rehearsal. So that's right. all you have is the punctuation and the direction, 
And that's, that was a big change for me. All right, we have another question uh, from an audience member. What role do you still want to play, whatever the age of the character? Oh, that's a good question. Wow, that is. I, I'm going to go with what Ho Jun said. I, I have to say, I've been invited twice and I wasn't able to either time, but I do want to play uh, Virginia Woolf. Just remember, as Martha. Yes, I, I want to be Martha. Martha. And, and, and there's going to be hey, George. Here's your George. Yes. <laughs> George <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's Anybody? a role I would love to play as well. I yeah. also, oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, hey, that, that would be was, fun. Yeah. Oh my God. My oh, grandmother Angela, was, I can see you. I, can see I you. would love to do that. I um, I, I my grandmother was a preacher, a numbers runner, oh, all of God. that in Detroit. She was something else. And I want to play this preacher. I want to play this woman who is flawed and complex and is a preacher, but is is struggling. You know, and I just. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, I I just love that role. There was a play that James Baldwin did years ago called I think it was Go Tell It on the Mountain, but it's a story about this this preacher who is you know denounced her 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 past because she just felt that when because she lost her child she was being punished by God. So she took took on this life of, of just you know being this preacher and giving her life to God, but all along her heart yearned for her husband, you know? And so anyway, but she's um, judgmental and mean and flawed. And then she finally has to break it, break down and, and just, you know, tell the truth about her heart. And um, I love roles like that. So I, yeah, yeah, that's me. Give me something that's <laughs> Anybody funny. else? What? I I think, I mean, I, I've always thought it would be fun to play somebody who is like either a diva singer or a, like a, premier violinist you know but somebody who's like a huge mm. huge talent that kind of talent that just seems so unattainable you know just i want to like, do master class i want to do oh master yeah class. yeah that's, oh, that's what you want to do Maria Callas. yeah i just i Ooh, think that'd be so good so, yeah so yeah, no, much, much fun you know to be read, that read person that play you read that play because you, you would kill it, that. elena you would kill it I oh saw my God. It that is zoe, a great that, that was zoe caldwell right zoe caldwell yeah, yeah. and audra, audra mcdonald mcdonald and audra oh, mcdonald yeah. is the one who was in carousel that was the alternative oh casting uh, that was her first big thing that's what put her on the map Oh, what? I love that. She's, yeah. I love her. She's, so, She's good. so good in The Good Wife. I mean, yes. just I have a good fight. I can, yes. Sing. Yes. I can sing too, but nobody likes it. Yeah, there you go. What about you, Ho Jun? What role? Oh, uh, okay. Well, besides, besides Martha, being, besides Martha. <laughs> being in, uh, yeah, uh, Miss Julie. Oh, oh, fantastic. I know. Talk about it. I got a shoe for you. Old. But but I did see Juliet Binoche being Ms. Julie, and I I was like, what? Are you, does that make sense? No. But she was playing. She's like, f it, I'm playing Ms. Julie. So she's anyway, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. So she played Miss Julie. I don't know. Kim, you got what one. You say. Um, Kim. You know, <laughs> I really want to be a a really really bad guy because I'm. Ooh. Ooh. So I really Ooh, let's see. want to be the good guy who turns violently bad. Ooh. I mean, just twist, just twist it. Nobody sees it coming. I just want to like slaughter everybody. Nice. So, uh, I, yeah, I, love candy candy man. Man. I don't know where that is yet, but I'm going to find it. You'd be scary. About, oh my God. Because you have such a nice guy. What about the cops from Pillow Man? Pillow Man. Which one? What are, what are the, one of the cops in Pillow Man? Okay. He's a masochist, Good. but he's Irish. What about you, Jack? Do I don't you know. Mean? I just want to be likable characters. Can someone just give me some likable character? I mean, I I want I like like, you know, uh, full like you were saying something that's full and flawed and and uh, I like getting emotional. I have no fear of it at all. I think it's okay. Mm. I'll tell mm. you what I have too that. Uh, I watched a document, I have a girlfriend who is the queen of documentaries, so she turns me on. There's this one called For the Birds. It started out as a student project and then the, 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 the director couldn't let it go, followed these people for five years. And I wanna play Kathy 
and Kathy, uh, without giving much away, because I can tell that Angela's going to watch it. And yeah, you know, fine, Angela. Angela. <laughs> writing it down. Can you tell? She's literally <laughs> writing it down. This, this character <laughs> hoards birds. Excuse me? She <laughs> hoards birds. birds. And that's what you want to play. Oh, a Kathy, bird hoarder. Kathy is the most intriguing character I think I've ever seen. It's wow. like it would be such a challenge to go sort of what uh, I think what Elena was talking about. It just to it's not why is she like that? It's like I know why she's like that or I think I do. But could I could I put that suit on? Woo! Yeah. Wear that character for well, those hours. animal people can be batshit crazy, so well, she, yeah, but she's, she's a, she's, I'm sure there's a term for her in psychology terms, but wow. she, she is an amazing, so I like, so for me, it would be like, I'm at that stage in life. It's like, I don't kind of care what, and I know you should, how good the piece is. If the character is captivating, yeah, I feel that way. Mm -hmm. I will step yeah. into it. I feel that right. way. I'll go. You I'll, know what you're, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, that's it. I, I agree with her. I, I'm just saying, you know what you're speaking to, to me, when you say that, Lee, it, it's like, there's, I don't, we are now at the place where we're experienced, you know, whereas before you're trying to get the job and you're trying to get them to experience you, now we're experiencing. Yes, now we want the experience. Yeah. I want to yes. journey in that coat. I want to put that yeah. character, that coat on, and I want to experience what that character is experiencing. And then as a result, the audience will experience it. But I, I get off now being in, you know, walking around with that coat on. So, yeah. All I right, love let me that. ask you one final question. What is a, a performance on stage, film, or television that you've seen uh, recently or ever that just, you just went, oh my God. It mm. was just the, the mm. thing. Mm. Anybody have one of those? Of late? I recently saw, even though there's a lot of feel, feeling about the film itself, but I I loved that young woman who, who was first time actor who played Billie Holiday. I thought oh, I what was that. oh I didn't see it was revelatory. It was wrath, wasn't it? It was revelatory. It was so she was yeah, so yeah. brave. Woo! Yes. So brave. And raw and raw and raw and raw. So that I agree. One, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Who else? Anybody else? I'm trying to think as I There's say. There's so this. many things. Yeah, Name one. Are. Name one. Well, the one I thought of, I mean, it's crazy, but the one that just captured me the other day was the girl who plays the teenage daughter on White Lotus. I'm obsessed with her. I thought she was fantastic. She's White like Lotus. Daddy. Even She's though a, I thought the messaging of White Lotus is one of the most obnoxious things I've well, ever. That's a whole other thing. But this kid is so real and so mm. simple mm. and so. Snobby. All the kids were. Well, they were great. All They're the kids were great. great. The I thought, adults were awful. In well, my I don't think that. Tell us how you really feel, Lee. <laughs> I'm not going to go with you on that. Yeah, we'll talk. But anyway, so no. But there's there's that's the one that just came to mind. But there's also there's that English actor. What's his name? Uh, um, oh God, he's in a bunch of. He's in on stage all the time. I've seen him a couple times. Of course, I shouldn't have said that because now I look like an idiot. But one of the ones that's popping into my brain is is from a while ago. Is when uh, Jeremy Irons in Dead Ringer, where he played the twins. Oh. Yes. Oh, oh, you're dark. That, that was oh, yeah. That was Lee. That was an amazing <laughs> performance. That was, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh my God. Yes. So many. Any Maria, Elaine? I, Maria. I'm just, Elaine. I, I'm not, I'm at an age where my memory is not so good. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm remembering what I watched last night. Yeah. yeah. I know. You're asking me what that thing was that turned my head. Oh. That, that, that started me down this road. It was Sydney Poitier and guess who's coming to dinner. And mm -hmm. look who you look like behind you. Look at that. You look like Sydney Poitier. Yeah, that's so ah. true. I I had the honor of working with Sir Mr. Po Poitier. Um, yeah. oh. He was regal. He's yeah, regal. yeah, he was. He is. He's elegant. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He hasn't Definitely. left us, has he? That's no, no, he is. No, 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 no. Yes. Yes. I got Can to I ask everyone a question. What actor was the first actor that inspired you to be an actor? Wow. I Audrey think... Hepburn and Shirley MacLaine. Oh, Shirley MacLaine. When I was a little oh. girl. 
for me, it was Cicely Tyson. Yeah. The autobiography of Mr. Yes. Pittman. That yeah. show changed my life. And I, and that's when I realized that TV wasn't just like people going, ha 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 ha. It was like, it was like really could change your life. You know, it was just amazing. She was amazing. And she was like so young, but yeah. she was so old in the show. Like, you know, when, when I saw her, I saw her in the trip to Bountiful and I was like, now she's the age that, that I met her at. Right, well, that's but right. she played. She played different ages. And, she did right. when I was a kid. Like the the oh, like the, is you know she you know she aged you know over the however many nights of the miniseries it was. Remember that miniseries? I and do. Uh, and so at the end of the show, she was like so so old, and because that's when she was like she was so brave. You know, that's when she was like walking up to the we water fountain, drinking out of the water fountain, and I'm, just, and I'm just like ah, like you know, twelve right, years right. old, falling my eyes out and. Well, oh, June, how about for you? Oh, I'm trying to remember, but I think that because um, I don't, I don't remember people's names <laughs> when I was uh, really into when I first got into cinema. But I, uh, the person that really stood out for me would be um, Jean Moreau in uh, Elevator to the Gallows. It's a French actress. Jean She's a Jean Moreau. Jean, Jean Moreau, Jean yes, Moreau. and it's it's the first uh, feature beautiful. by Louis Malle. Oh my God! And she it was him. when oh, she did she married him. I think so. Oh no, she had an affair with him. I think. Oh, okay, same thing. Uh, but she's talking. She's walking down Champs Elysees, and there's it's just a tracking shot, and she's just mumbling to herself about you know her her so called lover you know mm -hmm. left her or something. So she's, you know, distressed, but just the just the fact that she's mumbling and she's talking, and you can see the the whole thing that's like playing out in her head. I was like, wow, it was like nonverbal, but you can you can you you're able to read what she's saying or what she's feeling. I thought that was fantastic. I think also for me, Jenna Rollins in Woman oh. Under the Influence. <gasps> yes. And, yes, all her films. And Meryl Streep in Sophie's Choice. I thought. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. The, uh, when I was yeah. a little well, kid. Well, the French Lieutenant's woman also. I was or the like, French Lieutenant. Oh, yeah. yeah. When I was a kid, I saw Oliver and Jack Wilde as the Artful Dodger. I don't know if you remember that. I wanted to be him. <laughs> Oliver was a. I cared about him. <laughs> I wanted to be the bad guy. Well, and I'll tell you, having had the honor of working with Morgan Freeman on a film, and it was three days. It was me and Morgan Freeman and Ben Affleck. And after wow. about halfway through the first day, do you guys remember Body Heat with Catherine? Yeah, yes. 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 Mickey Rourke's first I break. Remember, do you remember <laughs> Kid Danson's character? He was the dancing lawyer. He was always dancing. He was trying to get William Hurt not to get in trouble. And he was just mm. dancing throughout the movie. Morgan Freeman is the dancing lawyer. He is sparkly and witty and he dances and he makes jokes. And I'm saying, you always play God in all these like happy. <laughs> I have a fucking Morgan all. Freeman. I got a Morgan Freeman story. I did a movie that was actually cut out of the movie Nurse Betty. But I had to see, I had a couple of scenes with uh, Morgan Freeman. Neil Freeman. Butte. I remember that. Neil Butte. Yeah, Neil Labute. And uh, yeah. but they cut my stuff out because they shortened the movie. Thanks. But I had two scenes with uh, Morgan Freeman and Chris Rock. And when we did the read through, Morgan Freeman was sitting next to me and I hear his voice and I turned to him and I said, you know, you're so paternal that hearing your voice makes me want to go mow the lawn. <laughs> and he goes, what? <laughs> I was like, never mind, forget it. Like, okay, forget that. Forget I said that. <laughs> All right. And uh, uh, Andra Day is the actress who yes, plays yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I hope we're going to see a lot more of her. Hey, wait, I want to know, Kim, who who did you say was the person who started you off? Oh, yeah. Oh, Sydney. Sydney Poitier. Oh, Sydney. Right, right, right. Okay. Watching, watching him and, and actually watching um, anybody. And I'm, I remember seeing on TV, um, um, what's the, uh, he played Crown. It was um, in um, Porgy and Bess. Um, the, in, in the in the oh, uh, I know who you mean. No, is that with with John Cassavetti? Yeah, no, with, something jungle. With, no. Um, 
Uh, OG person. Here you go. I, I mentioned I mentioned Porgy and Bess. Yeah, I remember it's yeah. him from was to Sir with love. You remember that? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. My sisters were obsessed with that movie. Absolutely. And, and Rosalind Cash. That's another one. Rosalind Rosalind Cash. Cash. Yeah. Back We're going to have to unfortunately wrap it up, but we are going to take this on the road. So just know I'm going to be yeah. calling on you okay. right here across the country. <laughs> but I do have to end with my Sydney Poitier story very quickly. Sure. When, yeah. when I did the movie, Some of All, no, uh, Field of, no, it was uh, Some of All, no, the Sneakers, Sneakers. And it was Timothy Busfield and I, who's an old friend, we were sitting in the room and it was like, River Phoenix and Robert Redford and Ben Kingsley and Sidney Poitier and, and Dan Aykroyd and Timothy and I were just like two little kids going like this at the urethra. It was so exciting. And then I'm sitting here like this facing forward and I hear this voice. I hear the voice and I hear it say, do you have a great many friends or perhaps a janitor complex? And I turn and Sidney Poitier is holding up my gigantic wad of keys. <laughs> and I came up with what I thought was a very witty response. I said, <laughs> <laughs> and that's my Sydney Poitier story. Thank you, Mike. Well, handle that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so um, much for inviting I, us all here. Oh, my pleasure. It was such a wonderful, wonderful evening. I have an idea. I think we should do uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? And on Thursday night, Lee plays Martha. On Friday night, Ho June plays Martha. On Saturday, Angela plays Martha. And then we're the next in. we just, you know, switch days. And Elena on Sunday. That's right. Yeah. Um, I was also going to mention that uh, it's interesting. Last month, we had uh, a community discussion on trans and queer community. Uh, the month before that, it was a Latinx. And what every single group we've had uh, talks about um, the way to get more representation on the stage is to get that group's representation at the table. And um, mm -hmm. once again, you all were saying it's important to get uh, people in their 40s, 50s, 60s uh, writing the shows instead of the 20 and 30 year olds. And I think that every organization needs to really take a, a deep look at what they're doing and what they're putting out there. Thank you, Michael. I really, I really want to thank Jack and Ho Jun for staying up because it's uh, like oh, I know. So one late company in the morning. In I was just going out. <laughs> <laughs> you are in New York. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much and have a beautiful Thank you. Day. Yes, right. thank you for having me. Bye. I'm thank so you, glad bye. Bye. I was honored to have you all here, seriously. I really love you. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye. Good night.